So the, we'll just go right into the, the therapy for visceral disease, which is what we're going to start with, is there's really no good uh, treatment medically. So if someone has ischemic bowel or chronic metastatic ischemia, uh, there's really no medicine you can give them. Obviously, the risk factors for mesenteric ischemia are smoking. Uh, as they advertise, it's a way to keep a slender figure. It's basically true. <clears throat> so medical treatment uh, basically is reserved for getting your patient ready for the OR. So before the OR, you want aggressive resuscitation uh, with restoration of adequate urine output, you know, correcting the electrolyte abnormalities, metabolic acidosis. If you, they have acute mesenteric ischemia or a dead bowel, obviously IV antibiotics should be administered. And then in those patients with chronic mesenteric ischemia, you should consider TPN. So getting right into it, major options. You have endovascular options and open options. Uh, so for endovascular therapy, it's often for patients with chronic mesenteric ischemia. Uh, Restenosis and symptomatic recurrence rates remain relatively high. Uh, there's reduced morbidity and mortality and improved quality of life versus open procedures. Uh, but the problem is it's worse long-term patency, and also there's an increased need for re-intervention. Uh, so this is one of those things that you kind of learn as you practice is for the SMA, because of the downward angle, the brachial approach uh, is usually uh, a lot easier to get in and track things through so you can actually do your intervention. Uh, femoral access is usually okay for your celiac. Uh, Again, a lot of times you want to look at the CAT scan beforehand to see what angle is coming off. Even for the celiac, if it's a downward angle, sometimes you're better off coming from the arm. Uh, and for intervention, it's primary stenting is recommended. So usually use a balloon expandable stent. You get better control, more radial force. Uh, you want to place the stent so it's kind of hanging into the aorta. Uh, but the problem with stenting is that it can complicate open options later on. Uh, Something that's been done more often now is you can do a retrograde mesenteric stenting. Essentially, when you have a patient with acute mesenteric ischemia with dead bowel, usually with the general surgery colleague, you'll go into the OR. Uh, they do their look, see how much bowel is viable. And if you know that there's some thrombosis of the proximal SMA, you can actually just dissect down onto the SMA, put a wire retrograde, and do an intervention to reduce how much bowel is going to be compromised uh, later. Uh, so mortality is 17% versus 80% for open bypass or 100% for anti-grade stenting. And I think the main reason for the anti-grade stenting is if you're not going to the operating room looking at that bowel and you're leaving dead bowel, the patient's probably not going to do well. Uh, so again, the advantages are while you're in the operating room, you have the ability to examine, resect any, any dead bowel, and then decreased operative time in terms of doing an open bypass. The disadvantages are you can do an inadvertent injury to the vessel, you can cause a dissection, uh, and there's obviously the risk for restenosis due to intimal hyperplasia. Uh, for acute mesenteric ischemia, uh, kind of your approach should be uh, transverse arteriotomy distal to the area of the obstruction, pass the fogarty up and down until all clot is evacuated. Uh, in a lot of cases, you'll see significant plaque if you're not able to, you know, repair the arteriotomy the arteriotomy that's run transverse, you want to extend it longitudinally and then probably fix it with a patch. Uh, so for the technique, the exposure for the celiac artery is best achieved through a midline approach. The SMA is usually found, you know, you can get at the base of the uh, transverse colon mesentery or lateral to the fourth portion of the duodenum. Uh, so a couple things to think about is if you're going to be doing an open bypass, multi-vessel revascularization improves long-term success. Uh, prosthetic grafts have better patency than vein grafts, mostly because of kinking and the way things lay. Uh, the femoral vein is better than the saphenous vein due to better size match and the thicker wall. But obviously harvesting the femoral vein adds to the complexity and time of procedure. Uh, and Dacron graft is most commonly used uh, unless the prosthetic is contraindicated. Uh, for chronic mesenteric ischemia, there are, there are some open options. Uh, again, I can't say this is done much at all, uh, but you can do a trans aortic end arterectomy. You can do retrograde mesenteric bypass or an anagrade mesenteric bypass. So the anagrade mesenteric bypass, excellent durability and symptom-free survival. It's best suited for elective revascularization. It's a big operation. Uh, you want your patient ready for it. Uh, the bypass graft originates from the supraceliac artery or from the supraceliac aorta, 
generally healthy, free of plaque, so it's a good place to sow to. Uh, the advantages are that the supraciliac artery, again, is, it's usually uninvolved with atherosclerosis, and the limbs of the bypass actually follow a natural or direct path maintaining prograde flow. There's less risk for bends and kinks in the bypass graft. Uh, for retrograde mesenteric bypass, again, there's been no data that shows that it's any better or any worse. Uh, the bypass graft originates below the visceral vessels, usually from the inferenal aorta, most often from the iliac arteries. Uh, again, the advantages are it's a lower incidence of postoperative complications and 30-day mortality. Uh, it's technically probably an easier operation. The inferenal aorta or iliac arteries are more easily exposed and it's faster. There is uh, less hemodynamic instability because you're not clamping across the aorta and there's less risk for distal immobilization because you're clamping lower down. Uh, again, the, the, the biggest disadvantage is that when you're tunneling and bringing the grafts up, it's kind of flopping around, it can kink, it can bend, and the lay is kind of hard to predict when the bowel is out of the way for your exposure put everything back and things just don't quite lay right. Uh, so some other stuff that we can talk about is median arcuate ligament syndrome and non-occlusive mesenteric ischemia. Again, the treatment for median arcuate ligament syndrome is you got to lyse the, the ligament and relieve the extrinsic compression. If you see this in, as a diagnosis, you know, putting a balloon or a stent, probably not going to work. Uh, and then NOMI, essentially you just want to treat the underlying cause that's causing the, the condition. So you want to improve circulatory support and cardiac output. Uh, you know, you read about selective angiography with direct infusion of papaverin or nitro. Uh, it's one of those things that at that point it's usually not going to make a difference. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, for renal vascular disease, again, there's open operative repairs. You can do an aortal renal bypass. It's the most versatile. You can use saphenous vein. Again, like we spoke about in the last talk, the hypogastric artery is usually best in children. Uh, you can also use PTFE. Uh, you can do an aortal renal thromboendarterectomy. Again, it's good for orificial disease, especially if it involves both sides. You can get to both of them at once. And then renal artery reimplantation, if you have a lot of redundancy or hypoplastic lesions in children, you can usually just cut out the area and re-implant re the artery. Uh, Percutaneous intervention is probably what most people do. Uh, balloon angioplasty and stenting is good for osteal lesions. And then, as we spoke about in the last talk, PTA or balloon angioplasty is sufficient for FMD. Uh, one thing to consider is distal protection is before you do your intervention, do you want to put a uh, embolic filter uh, distally to your lesion? Thank you. <laughs>